really like this idea on this duality between submission to like the surrendering to the Tao kind of and uh, resisting darkness. This new age really teaches like acceptance and non-resistance, but there is an inherent right and wrong, right? We do not submit to darkness, right? Uh, the Bible, so much about it is about walking upright and righteous. Uh, the Buddha taught upright action. Same with Krishna. Um, all of them. So this duality is really, really interesting. And there's a big key here in two seconds. Ten seconds. The beauty of strength. Now the healthful influence of the movement known as the higher thought or new thought or mental science or just mentalism consists precisely in this, that it sets itself rigorously to combat this debilitating doctrine of submission. It can see as well as others the beauty of weakness leaning upon strength, but it sees that the real source of the beauty lies in the strong element of the combination. The true beauty consists in the power to confer strength, and this power is not to be acquired by submission, but by exactly the opposite method of continually asserting our determination not to submit. Key right there right here he's he's about to dive in of course if we take it for granted that all the sorrow sickness pain trouble and other adversity in the world is the expression of the will of god then doubtless we must resign ourselves to the inevitable with all the submission we can muster and comfort ourselves with a vague hope that somehow in some far off future we shall find that good is the final goal of ill Though even this vague hope is a protest against the very submission we are endeavoring to exercise. But to make the assumption that the evil of life is the will of God is to assume what a careful and intelligent study of the laws of the universe, both mental and physical, will show us is not the truth. Ooh, this is the key that I wanted to talk about. Start this video on. the the will of evil in this duality so it's like all these mystery teachings like teach from oneness right so like the kabbalah and you know evil and darkness is there on your path for a purpose but it is not the purpose of like the most high and if we submit to darkness right we 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 stay in darkness and this comes back to this essential idea that if there's only like one emanation of light basically, right? Um, darkness is essentially only that which is like resisting its natural state. Darkness doesn't really like exist. We'll get deeper into this idea at a different time. But um, yeah, so getting into the, that submission part, this is why like righteousness in the Bible, upright action, uh, and all these different philosophies that are ethical and have a strong moral foundation are essentials, right? Because darkness is not the will of the divine. It is there for us to overcome it, to ever seek perfection. Thoth would tell you to ever seek the perfected state, um, to become one with the sun, like the Christ, like Zoroaster, like Quetzalcoatl, like the tribes of light. Oh, let's go deep. And if we turn to that book which contains the fullest delineation of these universal laws, we shall find nothing taught more clearly than that submission to the evils of life is not submission to the will of God. Life and light. Nothing that obscures life or restricts it can proceed from the same source as the power which gives light to them that sit in darkness and deliverance to them that are bound. Negation can never be affirmation. And the air we have always to guard against is that of attributing positive power to the negative. If we once grasp the truth that God is life, and that life in every mode of its expression can never be anything else than affirmative, then it must be clear to us that nothing which is of the opposite tendency can be according to the will of God. For God, the good to will any of the evil that is in the world would be for life to act with the purpose of diminishing itself, which contradicts the very idea of life. God is life, and life is, by its very nature, affirmative. The submission we have hitherto made... This duality is so fascinating, because it really goes into everything. So much of energy work, literally, like, so 
much of energy work is combining submission with like fierce defiance it's crazy it's a crazy idea but like you are like submitting to like the divine will and and the source flow of light and the ether that wants to pour through you but at the same time you're exercising willpower you're exercising will simultaneously at the center at the core right to not uh, to basically combat like darkness. Um, very interesting. It, it all comes back to the dot at the center of the circle. The circle being like the feminine, like the, the acceptance uh, and submission. Like not, you know, not in a degrading way or anything, but a dot. It's like the center of transmutation where the willpower and awareness reside powerful shit this little duality if you meditate upon this in a million different circumstances so fucking revealing and in fact like your struggle with integrating darkness you gotta really come at it from both sides on this like oscillating wave of a rhythm you gotta you gotta look at it from like a some like like accepting that that happened in your life understanding why compassionately but then making the moves to overcome it very awesome it has been to our own weakness, ignorance, and fear, and not to the supreme good. Submission to truth. But is no such thing as submission required of us in any circumstance? Are we always to have our own way in everything? Assuredly, the whole secret of our progress to liberty is involved in acquiring the habit of submission. But it is submission to superior truth, not to superior force. It sometimes happens that when we attain a higher truth, we... I love that idea. Submission to superior truth, not superior force. It's this, like, beliefs and ideas and truth, how you uh, understand it, is literally stepping stones on the great stairway to heaven. <laughs> um, yeah, this is why it's, it's actually, like, really bizarre to me ever, like, this whole entire incarnation since as a child is people getting stuck in a certain pattern of belief it's like why are you just standing on that step <laughs> why did you why did you decide to stop on that stair you know what i mean uh yeah belief and truth are stepping stones and always be ready always be ready to evolve to the next rung which also requires dissolving the evolution or the form that preceded it, that came before it, right? Every, like, you evolve or you transform. The form you currently hold must be slowly dissolved. Uh, and that's almost like letting go. That's surrendering what you are to become what you're meant to be. So that's, like, that aspect of submission. Now, I think we're about to get into the, the masculine side of it. Find that its reception requires us to rearrange the truth which we possessed before. Not indeed to lay any of them aside, for truth once recognized cannot be again put out of sight. But to recognize a different relative proportion between them from that which we had seen previously. Then there comes a submitting what has hitherto been our highest truth to one which we recognize is still higher. A process not always easy of attainment, but which must be gone through if our spiritual development is not to be arrested. The less I'm probably going to make a... Nice blueprint, either on immortal truth or reality files, on prayer and repentance. Because we can always, we always have an idea, or we actually oftentimes strongly know of a higher truth we could hold and, and live and exemplify and embody, right? But things are holding us back from attaining that higher truth of being. And it's actually not a higher truth, it's a deeper truth. <laughs> deeper into the center of the universe where you're going to find the center of the wheel and find refuge you know at the eye of the hurricane um and that deeper truth to attain it is really uh as you level up each stair you climb it's almost like the fibonacci in the sense that they get higher they get harder to scale okay um so when you get to like uh more like pinnacles and peaks and out here um, you're going to need tools and really mastery over 
uh, prayer, repentance, faith, trust, and rhythm. This is the this is like my current like challenge over the past months is in those realms. And this is the realm of true manifestation, true manifestation and transformation. Um, how do we do that? How can we constantly evolve our vehicles to hold more spiritual power that comes from the deepest truth? How can we do that? Because, um, yeah, you get stuck. You hit plateaus. and Yeah, and prayer and repentance, all this stuff, it's so misunderstood. And it actually makes so much sense. It's so intuitive. And it is truly the only way when obstacles become great. Because when great, when the darkness becomes vast, when you are looking into the void, and the void stares back into you, kind of thing, right? You can never, you can't enter that state. You literally can't enter it. Unless you have like supreme trust that some, like a higher power, something greater than you is looking out for you. A. B, like, faith in miracles, basically. Because, like, it's, it's, it's the same thing for an addict who, like, literally went to the edge where he might have, like, destroyed his brain and stuff. And he's so addicted now. Um, and if he's going to try to get, like, let go of that addiction and it really rules his life, he's going to have to, like, find... Either he's going to walk through it in fear which will never actually create the healing that needs to be done. Um, or else you have to connect to something higher than himself. Um, yeah, we'll that on Blueprint. The degree of life must be swallowed up in the greater. And for this purpose, it is necessary for us to learn that the smaller degree was only a partial and limited aspect of that which is more universal. You are kind of like a, you know... Like, on YouTube, you know how you have, like, 144 pixels, and then you have 360, 480, 720, and then 1080, right? And each increase in resolution is a more crisp, clear, and true, uh, I guess, expression of that divine truth. And we really start out with, like, four pixels. We're like a, we're, we're like a potato. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So to attain, you know, like that next, like that 10K status, that 4K status of, of expression and, and truth within you and expansion of being. Um, yeah, it is about, I guess, increasing to that capacity and dissolving the one below it. Just another example. Stronger and of greater significance in every way. Now, when going through the process of spiritual growth, there is ample scope for that training in self-knowledge and self-control, which is commonly understood by the word submission. But the character of the act is materially altered. It is no longer a half-despairing resignation to a superior force external to ourselves, which we can only vaguely hope is acting kindly and wisely. But it is an intelligent recognition of the true nature of our own interior forces and of the laws by which a robust spiritual constitution is to be developed. And the submission... This guy... This Thomas Troward, he's fucking with it. This guy has the uh, the 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 ancient my mystery knowledge within him. I've um, never heard of him before, but yeah, there's a lot of you know divine messengers that were sent here before our time that uh, really dialed in to bring the, the, a, a good message. This guy has it. He's really combining some of the most. Uh, Really, like, philosophical uh, wars or conflicts that happen. Um, and, and that comes in this duality of life that we have to, like, this live and through, through these, you know, the ebb and flow. He's got some master keys. That last thing he just said, master key. Go listen to that one more time. There's no longer to limitations which drain life of its liveliness and against which we instinctively rebel but to the law of our own evolution which manifests itself continually increasing degree of life and strength. The submission which we recognize is the price that has to be paid for increase in any direction. Even in the money market, we must invest before we... Love that. You gotta, 
This is literally what I was writing poetry about just earlier today. I was writing some epic poetry. Um, but he was just talking about sacrifice. And um, there's two primary components in true manifestation, which is essentially literally spiritual evolution. It's everything. Is The first component is trust in a transcendent power within you and outside of you, right? Like, you must have that trust or else you won't be able to enter into, like, a death. You can't die if you don't have that solid knowing, right, inside and outside. That knowing is what gives birth to the resurrection of the phoenix from the ashes. The second key component is creating space for a manifestation to occur. And this is what he was just talking about. And creating space has to do with sacrifice. It has to do with letting go and stopping. Non-action. Listening. To reveal the truth of your nature. A higher truth. It is the path of surrender. Of letting go. Of facing the unknown. And finding the organic state of, of like your inner child. So, um, the whole thing about creating space is, like, I guess, uh, like, sacrifice. I'm going to write that down real quick. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. And preparing yourself to be, like, in the I'm, I'm ready. You're not grasping for a greater truth. But you're at your center and acting and speaking from the heart where a greater truth can enter. You're building a partnership with your inner nature. You're not at war with the forces within you. This is what Thomas Troward was just talking about. Is these complex and super dynamic system of forces within you. And a deeper understanding and harmonious union of those forces, right? This is aligning the forces within. So... And that is done through compassionate understanding of the past, right? Built, creating space in the present. Preparing and becoming in the eye ready. I, I'm ready. And basically walking with God in your mind. Trust in a transcendent power. A pious heart. A religious heart. I just made a video like five videos ago. It's about Hermes on piety and philosophy. They go hand in hand. So you see how I'm literally right here in these notes is absolute master keys on this duality that Thomas is just speaking about. And it's funny that I wrote this today, flipped on this video, uh, because I heard the first few words of Thomas. I'm like, I'm going to make a video on this. We're talking about the same shit, literally written differently. And I can't wait to read you guys this poem. Maybe on a different video, but I'm just giving you a taste. Finding my center, honoring myself fully, Unshakable, staring to the depths of the void that stares back into me. Finding my center and watching the wheel turn around me. Find the center and knock knock and enter. Embrace the child, your spirit once wild. But long ago, it was dealt a blow and set aside defiled. Lies and pride split the mind and built the walls that now divide. Torn in two from the womb, a crack that grew uh, with self untrue, spirit unused, so it sleeps beneath the feet. A soul betrayed in every way falls below and begins to fade. Ego competes for names and fame with other slaves. <laughs> the day, yeah, um, <laughs> really funny ass poetry, but it was really a great reflection of this. A household now cold, we sit alone, confined by lines we once defined. An ego broke a man to many, he calls an enemy. His silent tears from violent years, a prideful soul that grew so cold in in the dark of winter. Newfound peace now enter in the midst of a tempest. Hurricane whirls with the cries of the world, souls lost on the winds of time. Whispering lies that float upon swirls and bind the mind and blind the eyes. A pursuit that ensues that all will lose. A chase through space where few escape. Because truth is raped and food is laced. 
a rat race to reach a fake place, a game we play as they steal away our deceive, <laughs> steal away with our deceived, de- we're deceived, we believe in a, pr- in a prize they replace, we're used, we're used as fuel for Satan's crew, darkness feeds as we stampede t- to suggested dreams, and they steal our inheritance and take their leave. <laughs> fucking epic poem I can't if I edit this thing up it'd be amazing wow and then just kind of like a hymn to the most high I see your light in all and I am grateful in awe of creation blessings from the sun and overflowing with love glimpsing my life from above God in my mind and truth in my heart be be at peace be still be silent and ready this is the wisdom of the crane my friend Wow. Fucking epic way to end that, wasn't it? Hit that fucking like button. Share this video. This is Immortal Truth. If you guys like what I'm doing here, definitely consider supporting me either through a PayPal donation or over on Patreon. I've put literally hundreds, no, thousands of hours into study, research, and all this information. And this channel that you're watching this on, it's never going to be big for a very select few t- individuals and if you appreciate what I do here want to see more of it want to help you want to progress this whole evolution really consider uh, what, what you can give there helps me out a bunch and yeah th- like I said this channel it's not for selling anything it's not for it's not for getting a lot of big like an audience or any of that all of this work is literally for a few people So thank you for watching. Peace.